Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another Stratus TM video. Guys, if you clicked on this video, most likely you clicked on this video for one reason and one reason only. You want to learn what it takes to get approved for a business credit card and not get declined. I have to submit uh, a ton of applications to different banks and pretty much get the shortcut to what it takes to actually get approved. Guys, my name is Stratus TM here on the channel and I'm 21 years old and I just got approved for my first business credit card and in terms of how much, I just got approved for $20,000. Now, in terms of what it takes what you have to do and what it really comes down to at the very end in terms of what the banks want to see and what they don't want to see make sure to watch this video to the very end that way you can be sure to suck up as much information as you can so that way you can apply it to your own personal life guys if you do enjoy the video make sure to slap the like button subscribe to the channel if you do appreciate the content and drop down in the comment section below what you want to see next or even what questions that you may have for yourself other than that guys let's get straight into the video all right, guys, so first thing is first, um, if you're looking to apply for a business credit card, you probably shouldn't be applying if you don't really have a business to use the credit card for because the last thing you want to do is get into debt that you don't really need in the case that you do get approved, right? First things first, why do you need a business credit card, right? Obviously, there needs to be something that sparks the idea. Let's say you have a business, you're buying products or you'd like to pretty much buy some products, sell them, have the time in between to actually sell the products and then pay off your card. Then a business credit card would actually fit right into place with the idea that you have or the business plan that you're doing. Let's say for another case, you have some sort of beauty store, right? And you want to buy your nails, you want to buy your products and you know, you don't have the money for it yet because you didn't yet get a chance to sell it. Now, I'm not saying you should actually buy the products when you have no money. I'm just saying it actually works better if you know you're actually going to get paid that amount. So you get a business credit card, you put the products and all the charges on it. That way, when you're actually developing your business, it gives yourself a little bit of time to actually, you know, work, earn, get the money and then pay off your cards while also earning points, rewards, cash back and all that fun stuff as well. The main thing is before you even think about applying for a business credit card, you want to have a business first, right? Pretty simple. Number two. So guys, let me just say, I don't want to say don't apply for a business uh, credit card if you don't have good personal credit yourself, because there are some banks that are a little bit flexible in terms of credit that you can still apply for a uh, business credit card as well. One thing I would say is obviously when you haven't applied for a business credit card before and it's your first time, the banks are going to look at your own uh, personal credit when they're making the decision on getting you your personal, uh, or I mean your business credit card, right? Obviously, in the eyes of the bank, hey, this guy, when it comes to his personal credit cards, right, he does a phenomenal job, fantastic. He pays all his stuff on time. He has multiple credit cards. He has low uh, credit utilization. Of course, it makes sense to accept him on his business credit card because he's doing so good on his personal. But on the other hand, if you're not doing so well on your personal credit card and you haven't taken the time to maybe pay down some of those payments that you owe or make those on-time payments or maybe you're opening up, you know, you're sending in a bunch of applications to get approved and you're getting denied a lot of places then probably there's a chance that you're not going to get approved for the business credit card as well right so main thing is before you even start and begin you want to make sure you take care of yourself on your own personal credit that way you have a strong credit pro uh, profile for the business number two getting a business credit card you plan on using the business credit card for uh business expenses right you don't want to commingle your funds when it comes to using the business credit card for personal funds and using the personal credit card for your business right you want to separate the business and the personal finances all together that way it just makes your credibility and everything a whole lot smoother when it comes to doing taxes when it comes to doing your accounting you want everything to be as smooth as possible right number three to get a business credit card you need to have a business and you need to have a bank account with a bank right I wouldn't say you might you might not need to but in the case that I did I actually had a bank account first I had the bank account open for about I'd say maybe two years and I didn't necessarily create the business bank account because I had a business I just kind of got everything ready and prepared beforehand that way when the time came which it did I can actually open it up and have everything ready and prepared now if you're asking what bank I'm banked with I am banked with Chase Chase in my opinion, I do got to make another video on it. Chase, in my opinion, is one of the top banks. I got a ton of credit cards through them. I got my personal accounts through them. I got my business account through them. Chase is my number one. Maybe one day I can get sponsored by Chase. Please don't treat me like Kanye and kick me out. That'd be bad. Uh, but <clears throat> number four, when it comes to getting a business credit card, you have to know how to fill out the application. A lot of these things when it comes to applying for credit cards are automated. 
right? So you need to make sure that you are filling it out correctly and you're knowledgeable in the application process. That way you can enhance your ability to get approved the best, right? Now, I'm not saying to fill it out with information that's not true. But for example, when it starts to ask you questions like, what is your annual salary, right? You want to have some sort of salary or some sort of income before you apply because the bank is going to base that on the fact that, hey, is he making enough money to pay down the card for the, you know, the amount that we'll approve him for? Because if you put you're only making 5000 a year, chances are you're not going to have a good chance of getting approved, right? Compared to maybe if you're making six figures and you put 100000 they might even lean a little bit more towards that, especially if you got some nice personal uh, history as well. That's another thing I'd say, right? Know how to fill out the application in terms of what you plan on, you know, in some banks, if they ask you what you plan on uh, using the business credit card for, you plan on using it for business. Obviously, the bank is a business in itself. They plan on, you know, taking your money, lending it out, giving you a little bit of an interest to you. But the bank is a business. And, you know, when it comes to you using your business credit card, if you're using that card to help grow your business and help expand your business, chances are they like that better than you just using the card to, you know, go buy the nicest toy or go spend the money that you really don't have to spend. So you want to use the card to help or make your money, make more money. If that makes sense. Number five, when it comes to getting a business credit card, you want to make sure you choose the right card. Now, my personal opinion, especially when you're starting out a business, the type of card you want is one with zero annual fees, right? Um, one good card I'd like to uh, actually point out in particular is the Chase. I believe it's the Unlimited Inc. I believe it's the Chase Unlimited Inc. Actually, I'm just going to go check real quick on my phone at the new card I got approved for just so that way I can give you guys accurate information. No annual fee is number one. I believe there's an APR um, incentive where you're not going to be charged uh, interest for the first 24 months or something like that. So there's a 0% intro APR in purchases for the first 12 months. After that, there's a variable APR of 18.24% to 24.24. I think the biggest thing I'd say on this one is you actually have a cash back on this card. So number two to the list, I'd say is you have unlimited one and a half percent cash back on every business purchase with no limits to the amount you can earn. So obviously when you have your business and you're making a ton of these business expenses and you're buying products materials maybe you have a some sort of wholesale store and you're buying your products for maybe your amazon to relist it or on ebay or mercury or offer up you're buying your products in bulk well, on top of you know getting the savings of you buying it in bulk plus that one and a half uh cash back percentage you're gonna get some more extra savings right so the extra cash back is just gonna be putting more money in your pocket on the money you spend another thing you get is obviously right now it looks like they have a a, uh, incentive uh, earn $750 bonus cash back after you spend 6,000 on purchases in the first three months after an account opening right so if you're already spending the money for your business right you might as well get a free $750 do you need it maybe not or maybe you do need it right so you might as well take advantage take the opportunity get the 750 and go buy yourself a nice pair of shoes or something else next thing earn rewards faster with employee cards at no additional cost when your employees purchase your business earns cash back so it's actually pretty neat it looks like you can actually get employee cards for your business as well that way you can keep your own credit card with yourself and if you have you know a certain amount of employees of course that you trust that we don't go out cashing out maxing out your limit you can actually give them a card so that way they can perform your business actions on your behalf as well account management so easily track expenses and maintain records for tax reporting and other business needs. Integrate your Chase Inc. credit card with bookkeeping software to simplify accounting. So guys, me and myself, I do have the Chase app. I can actually monitor all my expenses and everything that I use, my statements, all for my cell phone, right? So I can check my bank account. I can check my credit card. I can make my payments, set up my automatic payments, request a credit increase all from the app. So it's very simple, very e easy to use. It's something that I'd recommend for some of the people that are just starting out. Just just because of how simple and how easy they make it. The next one on the list, biggest thing, like I told you, there's no annual fee, right? No annual fee, enjoy all the benefits of Inc. Business Unlimited without having to pay a fee each year. You don't have to pay the fee. You can keep the card open. It could be just one of your first uh, business credit cards. And of course, you have the opportunity to build and grow as you develop and build your business. Those are just a few rewards uh, or a few benefits of the credit card itself. Obviously, the reason why I chose Chase and why I felt like Chase was the best for me is because I've already built a relationship with the issuing bank that I got the credit card for. I have checking accounts with Chase. I have credit cards with Chase. I have a business bank account with Chase. I've lined up all my ducks right 
just so that way when it comes to making the next best decision it just made the most sense to get a business credit card with chase because not only do i get the rewards but i already got a relationship with them and a matter of fact after me submitting the application i had an answer in literally like the next second saying i was approved for twenty thousand dollars and it's just a good feeling to have right the good feeling because you know all that hard work in the, the years before just to be able to come to this moment where now you can actually pivot and actually purchase the products and items you need for your business to be able to grow and expand now i know i do a lot of gaming videos here on the channel guys but when it comes to finances you know finances is very important to me right it's important because when you do your finances right you can actually level up your life similar to like a video game and actually make it to the end or make it to the boss a lot sooner right which of course our goal for everybody which probably like yourself is to reach financial freedom that way you know you can have you know businesses set up streams of income and everything lined up starting as simple as credit card that way you can be sure to live a nice successful life other than that guys uh, I mean when it comes to getting a credit card just a few things I'll tell you obviously there's five main important factors when it comes to maintaining a good credit record which I always like to go over just so that way it's very clear to my audience what you can do today even if it's with a personal card to be able you make the best choices so that way you have the best odds of getting a great approval with a business business credit card right when it comes to building credit right and i'm gonna have my list another list right over here as well so in terms of getting the building your credit there's five main important factors number one main important factor is going to be your payment history if you make on time payments with the bank pay them on time every month every single month year after year after year never have a month where you pay late never have a month where you know you're not only are you paying late but don't just make the minimum payment. I understand if you need to, but it will kind of cut down into your credit utilization, which I'll get into in just a few minutes. But the main thing is you don't want to pay late. You want to pay on time. It's pretty simple. Even if you got to pay that minimum payment, pay it, pay it, pay it. Even if you have to make your minimum payment, paying that will make the biggest difference, right? Because the second you get a late payment, it's going to affect your credit dramatic. Now, sometimes you can actually reach out to the credit bureau, make some sort of deal or bargain so that way they can remove it. But why even put yourself in that mess if you don't even really have to, right? Make sure you pay your payments. If you can't pay your payments, don't get a credit card. Number two is amount owed, all right? So amount owed is going to be pretty much like your credit utilization, right? If I have a credit card for $1,000, you don't want to use $1,000 and owe 1000 at the end of the month right and just make your minimum payment if you all use a thousand of a thousand using a hundred percent if i got approved for a ten thousand dollar credit card and i'm using five thousand every month then i'm using fifty percent of my credit which is fifty percent credit utilization typically what the banks or what the credit card companies like to do is they like you to be really less than thirty percent of your credit utilization and by thirty percent i really mean mean less than fifteen ten percent right because the more you have, it might knock off a few points. You'll actually see when it comes to monitoring your credit, when you're looking at like Credit Karma or Credit Sesame or Credit Journey through Chase. So make your payments on your credit cards. Don't get credit cards just to max them out. Get them and just pretty much use them for what you'd use as your everyday spending. For example, gas, uh, grocery shopping, um, maybe you know some simple food or instead of paying it for cash, use your credit card, pay it off through your bank account, earn those cashback rewards and once you're in those cashback rewards you'll use them on uh i don't know maybe get in a cup of coffee or maybe using it to uh join my membership on my youtube channel who knows which i am growing and building every day um but that that's what you'd want to typically do when it comes to credit utilization point number three is your length of credit history think about it right the longer history you have, the better the bank can an analyze you, analyze your spending, and analyze what type of uh, you know, credit user you are. If you have a longer history, you're always gonna have a better score, right? Because with longer history, they can go more in, you know, in detail, and pretty much it's kind of like a resume. It's a resume to the type of person you are and the type of finances you deal with and the type of spending you do right so typically you can be for example if you're brand new right you're brand new to credit but you got one credit card and you're paying on time and you have it maybe for the first six months sure you can maybe get into the 700s maybe you can get seven 700 715 720 it doesn't mean you're actually a solid 720 right because when it comes to getting approved for something like a car or something like a house your credit might not be strong enough. You don't have enough credit history or you don't have enough length of credit, which is almost about 15% of, uh, you know, the circle of your importance with 30%, 30 to 35% being your payment history, 
uh, 30% being about your amount owed or your credit utilization, and 15% being about your length of credit history. So main thing is don't close down any accounts, even if it's a credit card you don't use, even if it's using it once a month, right? Rotating your cards when it comes to getting gas or rotating it when it comes to getting your favorite Starbucks or getting your favorite smoothie or, you know, maybe ordering something online Amazon. Rotate the cards that you use and make sure you set up your automatic payments. That way, if you ever do forget, it'll automatically get withdrawn from your bank. Just so that way you can be active with the card, still get the points, still have a good relationship with the card, and continue to build up your credit. Number four is going to be your type of account, right? So your credit accounts, your credit mix. When it comes to building good credit, banks typically want you to have a good credit mix. By credit mix, what do I mean exactly? I mean different types of you know, you using their credit, right? For example, one would be credit cards. Credit cards is one type of uh, credit mix, right? You'll have different types of credit cards. Me, for example, I have five different credit cards. First one I have is the Chase Unlimited Freedom, probably one of my top ones. Number two is the Chase Student Freedom. I got that one on accident, but it's still a really, really sweet card. Number three is the Discover Cashback. Solid card, I love Discover. I actually got uh, two of them. That's one of my two, really good. Easy to do credit line increases and just overall a great bank. Never had problems with them, make my payments on time. They love working with me and I love working with them. Um, I believe the other one is the Discover It card. It actually was my Discover Secured card at first, but then it flipped to an unsecured. And then I think it flipped to an it. So I'm not exactly sure what, what it's called now, but um, same thing with them. Built my credit line with them from $500 to $1,500, 25, four, five, all the way up to like almost $10,000. Um, the fifth one on that list of credit cards that I own is the American Express. Uh, I believe Blue Cash every day it's some sort of spending for grocery shopping you get like five percent a, a lot of the main uh supermarkets probably like giant eagle acme uh marks a lot of the grocery stores like that so that's my current credit card mix up plus i have now a new one which is going to be a uh chase business unlimited ink card as well so that's going to be another one but typically another example is maybe like your auto history so if you have a credit card and you have an auto loan that's two right there Plus, if you have a mortgage on top of that, that's already three. That's typically a good balance of when it comes to credit mix. That's what they want to see. They want to see different types of credit loans or credit accounts. That way they can, you know, accurately judge the type of spender, the type of person you are when it comes to your finances. And I'd say that's approximately about 10%, 10 or 15% of the circle in terms of your credit. Last one on the list, sadly, is your inquiries. This is the one I hate the most. I hate it the most because you get penalized to use your credit. Now, when it comes to credit inquiries, pretty much any time you apply and you get your credit ran, um, you have an inquiry on your account, right? So it's not something major, it is minor, but you still want to, don't want to rack up credit inquiries and apply it to every single bank, right? Because that will damage your credit little by little, although it does go back up. So if someone like myself working in the uh, car auto industry, working at a dealership, obviously I deal with credit a lot. Um, you know, we have cases where, you know, people will go from, you know, dealership to dealership to dealership. They'll get their credit run 30, 40 different times and they come back saying why their credit went from maybe, let's say, 600 all the way to maybe like a 550, for example. And it's because they're getting their, their credit submit so many times, right? Typically, you don't want to be anywhere more than like maybe like two to five within a year or maybe even within two years. Um, I'm not exactly sure on, uh, you know, the amount of time it takes for it to reset. It might be like two or three before it actually goes away. But th this one I don't necessarily like because if I'm applying for another credit card or a business credit card or an auto loan or a mortgage, you need to use your credit, right? So I'd say that's probably the only thing I could work on, even though it helps me out to apply for new credit cards and to apply for, you know, different auto loans and mortgages because financially it makes sense for me to get that and to finance it using my credit. But only downside is it stays on my record for like one or two years which is fine nothing nothing huge but main point i'm trying to make is don't go applying for different companies or different cards or different banks when you don't need to keep the ones you got for the most part somebody might only need two or three credit cards i know i have five well now technically i have six um but maybe i got a little too trigger happy in the beginning but I think after that business credit card, I'm just about done. Um, at least for now, if I'm going on a lot of flights and stuff, I might look at some flight credit cards or I might look at some hotel credit cards. But all right, that one adds to, just like I said before, just about 10, 15%. Overall though, I hope I at least gave you a good idea of what it takes to get approved for a business credit card. And you know, some of the steps it takes to actually increase your credit 
and have one foot closer to financial freedom and living a very successful and frugal life. Um, other than that, guys, I want to thank you so much for watching the video. If you guys have any questions, like I said, drop it down in the comment section below. I will give you my honest opinion. Obviously, this isn't financial. Uh, this isn't financial advice, right? I'm not a, a lawyer. I'm not a, a financial advisor. Um, so this is just based on my opinion and based on my experience. But other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, good luck on your business credit card uh, virtues, and I'll see you on the next video. Lights, camera, welcome to the business credit card life.